Now, man of God, there are questions that are really rising and we are having some concern concerning the government of Kenya and the body of, the body of Christ uh, regarding uh, how the minister, the ministers prayed for this government and uh, some of those ministers who we saw uh, in the past praying for this government and uh, stating us that the government came from the Lord. But recently we are seeing a new trend in terms of how the same ministers are now perceiving the government and raising questions. And as young ministers who are trying to follow up from the ministers, those who we regard highly, we are now getting confused on the way. And you are here and the man of God we respect highly and who has been very focal in terms of how the government is directly responsible and the our relationship with God. We want to understand just as you had said that this government comes from the Lord. Is it true that this government still comes from the Lord? What is your take on this matter? Uh, first, uh, thank you for the interview. Yes. And I want to say, number one, uh, that uh, there's nothing like a young preacher. Yes. Like you say, you are young preachers. Yeah. The clarity of the voice of God is not determined by experience. Uh -huh. It's determined by how close you are with God. Mm. And uh, one thing you need to know as a young preacher is that uh, preachers are human beings. Sometimes they can be taken by emotions. Sometimes they can be annoyed like any other person. The human part of them. And um, that is probably what is happening in Kenya. But there is nothing that has changed. You know, the government is from God. Take, for example, you, you produce a child. Yes. And as the child grows up, it becomes a thug. Does he stop becoming your child? No. <laughs> He's still your son. Yeah. So, he does not only qualify to be your son when he behaves well. Oh. And then when he, be, he misbehaves, you call him a child of the neighbor. Mm -hmm. This government is ours. We pray it into power. We will take care of it until maturity. You know, what, what happened is uh, most preachers prayed until the inauguration day. Yeah. And that became the end of their prayer. We prayed and fasted and we concentrated. And then after we stopped praying, we had our personal expectations uh -huh. based on the promises the president made to many other preachers, as I'm told. So probably, uh, probably some of the statements you are hearing from preachers yeah. are not necessarily from God. Uh -huh. You must be able to differentiate when a preacher is speaking as the preacher. Mm. And you must be able to differentiate when God is speaking. God is not embarrassed with the government. Preachers can be embarrassed, but that is not God. God ordained every, ordains every government for a purpose. And I cannot, I can assure you, like I said one year ago, and I could request the studio if they find my clip of one year ago, they should play it for the audience. When I was answering the question whether this government is from God, Sometimes there are questions that people ask whether the devil can establish governments. But I want to bring to your attention this morning that the work of establishing governments is a preserve of God. There is no president in the world or in any state that has been placed there by the devil. The devil has always tried, but I can guarantee you, he has never succeeded. Because this is permanently written in the word of God. In Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. In verse 2, the authorities that exist 
have been established by God. Verse 2. Consequently, he who re repairs against the authority is repairing against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Governments are established through various ways. Some governments are established through a, a political process. Others through monarchy or kingdoms. And other governments are established by military means like Somalia and other places. Where governments are established through military method. But in all this aspect, every government may not be liked by the people, but it is established by God to serve a purpose. Romans chapter 9 verse 17. That's when you learn that God established the government of Egypt. And in his wisdom, he placed there a man called Pharaoh. Everyone did not know that it was God who established the government of Egypt in those days. But when you read Romans chapter 9 verse 17, you will understand. After we have acknowledged and established that every government has been ordained by God, what then is our duty? Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Remind the people to subject, to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility to what all men. Remind the people to be subject. Our duty as a church is to remind the people to be subject to rulers and to authorities. The Bible says we must make prayers, requests, intercession, and thanksgiving for everyone and also for kings and those in authority. Are you in agreement with the Bible? How many of you agree with the Bible? How many of you agree kwamba tunahitaji kuombea serikali yetu? We pray for our government. You know, we are church people. We are not church goers. We are true church people. You know, kuna church goers and true church people. A true church person will always find out what God is saying and do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we become afraid to do, to do the right thing amidst millions who do the wrong thing because you may suffer the consequences but some of us are ready to do whatever is right we are not a creation of the government we were established by God before this government as a church we must understand and this must be clear in your mind the devil has no capacity the, the issue of establishing governments is a preserve of God. It's a preserve of God. Let nobody cheat you that there can ever be a government established by the devil. This government is not from the devil. Uh -huh. And I can speak this severally everywhere, every minute, that this government is from God. It could have made a few mistakes, but it is from God. And uh, preachers should not rise and begin castigating. And uh, you remember, you remember about um, one and a half years ago. No, no, no. About three months ago. Yes. I told I, I told the preachers not to abandon the government. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, You remember? Sure. I remember. When, when it, they were saying when the Gen Z yes. rose up, and yes. I think you, the studio <laughs> people, can also play that clip. Yes. Where I said. Preachers should not abandon the president. Mm. And they are saying they never took command. You know, I, I saw particularly 
one young preacher in Nairobi. Yes. And he was shouting that he <laughs> has never taken any money. Yeah. I personally know that the president took money to his church. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. So when things go wrong, it's no time to uh, have a playing game. Yes. It's time to find for a way forward. Yes. And this morning I want to speak about, um, I want to speak to, to the pastors, the ministers of the gospel in this nation of Kenya. I have, um, I have watched carefully what the ministers of the gospel are saying. And I've come to admit that fear, <laughs> fear is the worst enemy for everyone. I have seen ministers of the gospel coming to the open to say that they never received any money from William Ruto. <laughs> when I saw them receive money. <laughs> it is no time to try to exonerate ourselves. It is time to speak the truth. People are saying that they have never. Of course, this church has never done a fundraising that requires money from the president or anybody. But that, that's, that does not mean that we have never received any money. Even if you received 10,000 for fuel, you received money. Coming to the open, we have never received any money. You received money. Do not be afraid because fear can make you lie. I don't believe in lying. If I did a mistake, I say yeah, I did a mistake. I don't have to lie to exonerate myself to appear a good man. And I'm, not, I'm talking to the ministers of the gospel in this nation of Kenya. Simply because some of them know that nobody took a photo when they were receiving money. People make mistakes. We're all human. But you do not have to dwell in making a mistake. Ministers of the gospel, it is no time for us to say we don't know William Ruto. How, how does a minister of the gospel, where the president attended service for an entire day, come up and say he has never received money? What did the president give us offering? Did he give Bibles? One and a half years ago, I had mentioned clearly to the preachers yeah. that the assignment God gave us to do, God finished during the inauguration day. Uh -huh. I gave an analogy of a wedding because that's what God told me. He told me what we have been doing is like in a wedding. Mm. And uh, we are a wedding committee. Yeah. The work of the wedding committee ends at the reception. There are many privileges you will enjoy as a member of the wedding committee or the matching squad. But immediately these people are married. You are supposed to give them each time to run the government. Mm. And that's why I want to say on a serious note, a President William Ruto is not Pastor William Ruto. Uh -huh. He's the President of the Republic of Kenya. It's supposed to be the president of the witches, the wizards, the Muslims, the Christians, the thugs, all categories of people. It's not the president of the, the, the preachers. I heard people talk about the manual. Do you want President William Ruther to, ra to run the government as a church? Mm -hmm. It is not possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, God gave him the government. But if he gave him the authority, the government, as it's seen in, in Romans 13, he must have given him the instruments of power and the methodology on how he will run the government. Uh -huh. I mean, if preachers want to run the government as a church, one of them should try and buy for presidents. <laughs> we, have, we have had preachers who have tried. In my view, those preachers, uh, even though they are senior, they missed the point. They missed the point. It is, it is one year now since uh, our current president was uh, sworn into office. And, and I think uh, God has been gracious and he's been faithful. We have not had it very rough. Even though everyone says it has not been very easy. Uh, the president has been in office for one year, and uh, most pastors had a lot of expectation. I want to appeal to many pastors not to, to cast the government. You pray for it. I, I listened to what pastors were saying when we went to pray for, for the rains sometime last year. 
The truth is, most pastors and intercessors prayed for this government to be in power. The government is in power. The reason why God wanted this government is because of revival. And I've said severally, it is not the government to conduct the revival. It is us. We have done one year. The president has been in office for one year. How much have we done as pastors as it pertains to revival? The president is not coming to fund any crusade. If any pastor somewhere is seated and waiting for President William Ruto to conduct a crusade, you are wasting your time. Pastors, listen. When I prayed for this time, the Lord gave me an uh, analogy for the second time. He told me, whatever we were doing, we were supporting the pride and the pride guru. We, uh, we were the committee for the wedding. We must be conscious of where our task ends. The marching squad, the wedding committee, their job ends when the wedding has been done. Actually, if we are given an extension, it is at the reception. That is the extension. So every pastor listening to me all over the country, let's wake up. Let's wake up to reality. Let us allow the president to do his job. Let us do our job. We are thousands of us. The president is not coming to build for us churches. If you are a pastor and your church is not building, do it. When you are working in a committee of a wedding, there are a few privileges you enjoy before the wedding day. One of the privileges is that you sit in hotels, you can take tea as you are planning, and you can constantly and regularly receive calls from either the bride or the bridegroom. But don't expect those calls after the wedding. After the wedding, your job is over. Go back and restructure your life. We cannot live in the mood of a wedding every time. You must be conscious to that fact that the wife that has been married will not continue wearing a gown for the entire week. Immediately after the wedding, you must be able to see the signs and get back into business. There are many pastors who are waiting that this government is ours. We put it in place, and therefore we must receive this and this. There's a day I went to Karen for prayer. Yes. One of the preachers that was shouting yesterday, the other day, yeah. came. Yeah. And she confirmed to us that this government is from God. Uh -huh. I was shocked personally to, to listen. I, with all due respect, yeah. and I, I honor that preacher, but I think that was a bit emotional. Yeah. It was a bit emotional because she is the one that told us that she has just heard from God mm -hmm. that this is the garment of God. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be embarrassed and say, I thought it was from God. It is from God. Maybe I need to clarify this, uh -huh. even to this, sure. my, my fellow preachers. Mm. Please, nothing has changed. This garment is from God. That day, they were quoting God. Yeah. Now they are quoting the people. They are quoting the scriptures. Some of these preachers, when they used to come to us, they could not say that, um, they could not even quote scripture. Mm. They used to say, we are quoting God because we had him speak to us. Yes. The question I'm asking, isn't God still speaking to you? What happened to the voice you used to present? You could go to the mountain for prayer seven days when you come back. You tell us about what God has spoken. I have always you are gone to God every time. Yes. But I am persuaded that this time round, God has not spoken so much like many preachers want to tell us. <laughs> God has not spoken that much. <laughs> I only asked him the other day about uh, D.P. Rigathi yes. Igashawa. Yes. And he told me none of the preachers and the prophets who could actually say that they know where he came from. Mm. And God told me it's me who knows where I brought him from 
and uh, it's me who knows where I'm taking him to. And uh, the other day when I was asking God about the direction of the country, the Lord just told me uh, 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 it's time for wisdom and decision making. Yes. So there is no, all these other things are, are just stories. And uh, if you asked me genuinely, I could uh, request the president to limit his, the time he spends with pastors for now. Uh -huh. Yes. They are, uh, the men of them are a bit emotional because of the promises. And we are, we are a bit, I can say preachers are a bit impatient. Mm -hmm. When a preacher is hungry, he becomes angry. <laughs> when, when the stomach is empty, he becomes so annoyed. Mm -hmm. Elijah is a, is a typical example. He said, I'm, I'm the only one left and he was running away mm -hmm. when actually God had more people. So, uh, Mr. President, there are many uh, broken promises you made to the preachers. Uh, that, that's what is actually uh trying to show up like it's the voice of god uh -huh. it's, it's the many uh, promises uh thank you man of god because uh that clarification is uh satisfying us maybe another question i could ask now that uh, the the body of christ has listened to the division among the ministers what should be the relationship now among uh, between the church and the president and uh, how should now the, should the judge uh, present himself or, or re respond to these allegations? Is it going to shake the belief to, the, to this government or what? You know, you, you know, the church is not limited to us, the Pentecostals. Uh -huh. We have the Catholics. Yes. We have the Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. We have many other churches. Mm -hmm. It's not limited to us. But let me say this. The truth is, these ministers are not speaking from God. Mm -hmm. They are giving their personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Our duty at the moment is to pray for the government. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We do not have any other duty that we should do. So there is nothing, I don't think that the sentiments that were given over the weekend have anything to affect the relationship of the church and the state. Mm. I, I saw one man of God talking about uh, the covenant has been broken. Yes. <laughs> we never had a covenant with, with, with the state. And it's even shocking. When, when the Catholics look at some of those things, they wonder, <laughs> when, where was this covenant? Mm -hmm. I mean, who made the covenant? Mm -hmm. That the covenant, the church to separate from the state. When did the church become one with the state? What we did is that we did our part as a marching squad. And we missed the point, and some of us continued going deeper with expectations that were not part of what of our assignment we yes. went beyond our assignment mm. so there is there is i can say there's no division between the church mm -hmm. and the state mm -hmm. the problem is we are missing in terms of roles uh -huh. the church because we were so close to the president we are trying to become the president and we want the president to become the pastor it cannot work the president is the president and the pastors are the pastors men of god let's go back and preach Let's go back and preach. In case we are given a word of knowledge or a prophecy, we can present it. But for now, allow the commander-in-chief to be the commander-in-chief. Amen. And let us also command the demons. Amen. Each one of us should do our duty. Amen. The moment we begin seeing like the president has not done the right thing, has not done the right thing, I mean, why extend that far? Mm -hmm. I mean, pastor. Yes. Did this pastor think that the president was going to ask them every day? He makes a call in the morning. <laughs> says, Apostle, where should I go today? Apostle, what should I eat today? Mm. Apostle, who should I employ? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but again, for the president, uh, sir, it's also important for you to look at the promises you made to some of those pastors who mm. came to your house and try to fulfill one, of, one or two, that which is applicable and that which is possible. Or those of us who say we hear from God, <laughs> yes. we see God. They are saying the government is, from, is not from God. Mm. So which one was from God? <laughs> which one was from God? Mm -hmm. Because even the other one that they, they, we said it was not from God, mm. now it is together with this one. Yes. So, which, so which of the two governments, the one led by William Ruto and the one led by Raira Odinga, was from God? Because there is a team that said Raira is from God. And there's a team that said, Ruto is from God. Now, 
Ruto and Raira are together. So the team which says Raira is from God is right. The one who says Ruto is from God is right because <laughs> all, all the two teams have their people working, working. for us. Yes. So what, what else do we have to say? Uh -huh. If you say Raira is, from, is not from God, and you also say Ruto is not from God. Now, I say it, Ruto is from God. You say it, Raira is from God. Now, Raira, you are Raira from God and my Ruto from God are working together. So that simply means the two of them, according to me and you, are from God and they have an opportunity to serve the nation. Mm. Unless we say these guys, both of them, are not from God, then you have to bring to us who then is from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the truth is, the government of Dr. William Ruto is from God. Amen.